Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So we're continuing with our paper, June 2019, paper Zimsek. So paper one, uh, question 11 says, which part of the male reproductive uh, system stores sperm? So it would be the testis. Let me see if I can get you. Yeah, so this is the diagram for the male reproductive system. So this is the penis, it's just a shaft. And this is the urethra. Urethra, it has two functions in males. It um, channels urine and it also channels sperm. So same channel. But then for women, it's not. Women have two different channels for um, urine and uh, some other stuff. So, But then for, for men, it's just it's just a singular channel. So the, the this one, it connects the, the testes to the to the uh, vas deferens, this, this um, uh, sperm duct. So it, it's connected uh, through this. So this one is the one that channels between the testis and, and the sperm duct here. And uh, what else? So the prostate gland, the prostate gland, this one, it produces uh, the fluid. So sperm, it's actually comprised, uh, it actually comprises some fluids as well, some fluids and um, the, the sperm cells okay so those fluids are produced by the by the prostate gland and um, sperm duct does the vice difference so epididymis uh, well, how do you pronounce this epididymis so epididymis uh, is this one here that's that's what we discussed earlier so yeah that's it let's quickly move to the next question Next question says the diagram shows the reproductive system of a woman. What part is S? So this part here. This part here it's obviously the, the ovary. You can see. Um, well, let me see if I can get another better diagram. But then this one it's it's always the ovary, this two. So okay, so the, this this one is a better diagram. So the uterus is this one here. So it's a uh, it's it's a very thick wall, and then the cervix it's this part. And then the vagina, it's uh, it's um, actually on this part here, and the ovaries, you see, these ones, those are the ovaries, and they're actually three holes here. Uh, they're actually two holes here. Uh, some women actually don't know. They're actually two holes here. There is one for for p, and then there is one for uh, sexual intercourse. So the uh, there is the vaginal, and then there is another one here. So for peeing, that's why I was saying earlier on in our previous video that women actually have two channels. There's one for you in and then there's another one which is uh, uh, different a little bit. So yeah, so let's, let's quickly move to the next part. Next part, what does it say? It says, which disease is caused by drinking contaminated water? Ebola is caused by a virus. Okay, typhoid is caused by a bacteria, drinking water, exactly. So we can think of where typhoid uh, outbreaks okay in zimbabwe it's usually um you know places where clean water is hard to access or places where people you know hygiene uh is kind of impossible because of sewer you know pipes and all that this congroid congroid it's uh it's an sti okay it's an sti bacterial sti it's, it's it's um it's not uncommon in uh in our country sub-saharan africa so congroid, it's an STI. So it's transmitted strictly by sexual um, intercourse. So through sexual intercourse, just like HIV. So that's congroid for you. Let's quickly move to the next part. The next part is, okay. So the diagram shows uh, some specialized human cells. Which part, which, which cell A, B, C, or D is the um, target of HIV? So I asked to evaluate here. So the, f the first thing that you can do is to identify what the cells are. So I don't know when Zimsek will start giving you guys colored images, but uh, yeah. So some of these images, they're a little bit tricky to tell exactly what they are. But um, there are two types of uh, blood cells here, actually. So this one, uh, Okay, there are actually three types of blood cells. This one, this one, and this one. Uh, this one, it's, uh, it's, it's sperm, okay? 
and don't say spams. The plural of spam, it's simply spam. Don't say spams. There's nothing like that. So anyway, the, this one, it's obviously out because it's spam. And we're left with these three. These three are blood cells. This one here, it's called, uh, uh, it's called neutrophil. So neutrophil, you can see from those three. So whenever you see this three, it's, it's, a, it's a neutrophil. Neutrophil, it's a, a type of uh, white blood cell. But this type of white blood cell, it's generally not affected by HIV, okay? This one here, it's a red blood cell. We see it just because of this disc shape here. So obviously, just because they're, uh, it's not colored, so it would be hard. So neutrophil. So this is neutrophil and then it's generally not affected. This one now, this one is the white blood cell. That's what they were going for. The general white blood cell. I think it's they're called phagocytes. Uh, it lists one part of, uh, you know, one type of those white blood cells affected by HIV. They're called phagocytes. But generally, this is how they're depicted. As if it's uh, some wool ball that's been, you know, roughed out a little bit. So if you see it in white, they'll, they'll depict it like that. So it, it should be this one. So white blood cells. So we'd actually choose A here. Okay. So just to, just to recap, we eliminated spam. Because spam is definitely not affected uh, by HIV. Then we eliminated red blood cell because we know that they're not affected. Then neutrophil, it was closed because it's also a uh, part of the defense mechanism in a human, but then it's not affected by HIV, okay, generally. So, but then this one they were going for, white blood cells, so that's why we chose this one. Let's quickly move to question 15. So the diagram shows a simple distillation apparatus, what happens in part X. So this part here, so this is a simple setup, you hit and then you know, salty water, uh, there's, uh, you know, vapor comes through and then the water out. And then at part X, what you want to do, because you'll be also, the, the reason you're putting in water is such that you can collect um, whatever is coming out of here as a liquid. So what you're doing there is this water will be cold and it will condense, it will condense the whatever gas will be here. So the purpose of uh, the, what's, what's happening in, at X is that uh, vapor is converted to liquid, okay? This, that process is called condensation. Yeah, you probably know, knew this one. So it's called condensation. So that was what was happening. So you heat, becomes vapor, it moves water out, and then you, you have only the, the gas, sort of pure gas or something. Then the water which comes in here to be cold. So when it's cold, that means that the gas would be, uh, the heat from the gas will be absorbed by the water and then the water would have to be collected as, um, as, as a liquid. Let's quickly move to question 16. Question 16 says an element X is electronic configuration to 8 2. What's the charge of ion of an ion of X? So you look at valence electrons. Valence electrons means electrons in the outer uh, most shell so the electrons are actually these ones too okay the first one is filled out by two general generally the second one is filled out by eight generally then afterwards you have to fill this one but then this one now it's only filled with two so if it's filled with two generally again it means that this element will lose its electrons Electro, if an element has more than four or more than three electrons, what it means is that normally that electron accepts other electrons in order to fill up its, um, its number of uh, electrons in the outermost shell, what's called stability. Okay, so this one achieves stability by getting rid of these two. If it gets rid of electrons, that means that you have two more protons than electrons. So you'd actually get two plus. Because the, the, this, this, this two will be gone. So 
initially what you had was is a 12. Initially what you had was 12 plus 12 and you had minus 12. So this element was neutral. But then you took away the minuses. Minuses now they're only left 10. But then you had what? You have 12 protons which you cannot affect. So obviously if you uh, see the difference here if you add the two you see that you get plus two. So that's why we have to choose this. That would be the charge of that ion. Let's quickly move to question 17. Question 17 says which statement is true about this atom here? So this is a very common question and um, in the previous uh, question paper that we did we actually covered some part. So this one is called the mass number, okay? So you are given the number of protons and number of neutrons. And this one is called the atomic number, so it's simply number of protons. Yeah, so the, what, what it simply means is that um, 37 protons plus neutrons. So it cannot be 37 neutrons, no. And it cannot be 37 protons, no. Okay. But then um, it's protons plus neutrons. So 37 nucleons. Nucleons simply means residence of the nucleus. They're called nucleons. Okay, so there are 37 of them. But we don't have anything written in nucleons, so we are going to skip. It has 20 protons. So protons, we say it, uh, it's this number here. So obviously it can't. It has 20 neutrons. If you have 17 protons, or uh, if you subtract from 37, you get 20 neutrons left. So that's why it's D. Okay. So again, uh, the way that we write elements is this element symbol. Let's say it's oxygen. You put O here. Here you put the mass number. Here you put the atomic number. Atomic number you can find it in the periodic table. Okay. Let's quickly move to question 18. Which formula is used to calculate the concentration of a solution? So concentration of a solution it's equal to number of moles divided by volume. Okay, this one here it's called uh, this one is density. Number of moles by by volume um, that's not it. Number of moles divided by volume that's that's what we chose. Mass by volume uh, that's not it again. So just know that concentration of a, a solution it's it's uh, the one of the way that it's measured. It's called molarity. So m. So it can be 0.1 m, simply means 0.1 moles per unit volume, so per liter. So for formulaic it'd be per liter, but in general it's number of moles per, per volume, per unit volume. So 19, which of uh, which one is a property of molten um, ionic compounds? Okay, uh, ionic compounds. So this is molten. The ionic compound is molten. So if it's molten, uh, you can start eliminating some, some stuff here. So if it's molten, uh, this D, let's start from the bottom. It is a non-conductor of uh, electricity. This is false. If it's molten, then it means that the electrons, they are released. So obviously they can move around, mobile around, and thereby they can conduct electricity. So this one is obviously wrong. It is a low melting point. No, ionic compounds have... Uh, a very strong structure, the uh, binding or the electrostatic forces that bind the uh, particles together there in the ionic compounds, they're very strong. So it has a high melting point because when you want to melt it, you have to break those bonds somehow. So it is uh, insoluble in water. So this is another lie again. Okay, this is another um, false statement. Any compounds generally they dissolve in water, okay, and when they dissolve in water, they act as an electrolyte.